Hello my friends and welcome back to another Potato Danger 5 random random run where we take a random class and randomize a weapon and see if we can beat Danger 5 with it. On to over half of the classes done so far I think and we are hovering at just over an 80% win rate. I think it's still technically possible for me to hit 90% uh, by the time I've done all the classes so I'm looking forward to trying that. Um, let's see what we get and see if we can maintain a winning streak. All right, we got Golem, which I believe I have not yet done for random weapons. So let's see what we roll. Uh, there's a bunch of weapons here that will be really, really bad. So hopefully we can make this one work. Oh no, it's the worst possible one. Okay, well, we can't heal. We've got a weapon that kills things slowly and does not give us anything. Um, although I guess it's thematic that we're a rock that's on fire. Uh, just a kind of cool visual concept for everyone. Let's take our lots of health and hope we can survive. <laughs> Torch isn't the worst weapon in the very early game because it does have a good swing animation and not the worst attack speed. So we can make decent money off the early waves. I should probably be manually targeting these guys down. Um, but the problem is, as you can see, we're going to end up pretty behind on, on money because we weren't able to pick it all up. Uh, just because it takes that one extra second to kill stuff. Obviously, we can't take HP regeneration here. I can take percent damage. I think I'm just going to roll for armor. Um, Alright, we didn't get any armor. Didn't get any harvesting. I could take luck consumables obviously don't matter to the golem because you can't heal off of them but luck does increase your the power of your level ups attack speed also matters a lot less on torches i think i'm just going to reroll this it's just too bad a, a pool i'll take one armor here to try to keep us alive um i think given how bad torches are i might just buy the coupon and not worry about maxing out on torches. Obviously we want, to, we want to max out on our primitive weapon tag and we'll need to max out on wave clear at some point. Um, no, it's still probably right to just go for more torches. Unfortunately, you can see where we have 28, so if I had managed to pick up the six materials that we left on the ground, because torch kills things slowly, we would be able to reroll twice and buy two torches, potentially. As is, we can maximum buy one. So I guess what I will do, actually, in that case, and I suppose I shouldn't have locked this, is I will buy the coupon and then buy a torch, right? I can afford that. Yeah. That is... No, that would be 31. So I cannot afford to do that. We'll just buy a torch and roll for another one. It might be 30. I'm not sure how the rounding works on that, but either way, we didn't have enough. Uh, and I'll roll one more time and lock another torch. All right. The good thing about torch, I guess, is that it is an elemental weapon and it's, you know, it's got two weapon tags. So we're getting a lot of flat damage and a lot of flat HP from it. Um... Any weapon that has two weapon tags can be pretty valuable. And the knockback is not zero to be useful for us. Can I kill this tree in time? Probably not. Okay, nice. We got it. Again, left a lot of materials on the ground, but that's just going to happen. We'll take some harvesting. Early on, I think that's really important. Snake is going to be really, really good for us, so I'll definitely lock that. Buy a torch and roll. Roll again. And we won't be able to afford a torch if I roll into one at this point, but I think I still need to try to hit one. Wow, that was unbelievably unlucky. All right. <laughs> so this is a bad set of weapons, and our first set of shops have been very, very bad for us so far. Uh, on a character that isn't... I mean, this isn't the hardest character in the game once you kind of know how to play it, but without spiky shield damage scaling, it's going to have really hard time with wave clear. Um, with a weapon especially that already has a very hard time with wave clear. Oh, come on. Of course, I need to remember to go back and hit the trees again. Left 19 on the ground, but hey, we picked up 69, so that's nice. I'll take the, uh, the coupon and just get damage here. Percent damage is important. I think I do need to start just building some damage. And then here I will buy the coupon first. Remember to actually do that uh, properly. I almost always forget to buy the coupon first in this kind of situation, so I'm proud of myself there. Everyone clap. 
and I'll buy the snake. We do have 58 HP, so that part's pretty nice. I will buy the helmet. Armor's so important for this character, and I'm going to reroll twice looking for torches. I think it's worth doing that, because I really do want to max out torches. I won't buy duct tape here, even though armor's really good, because we will also lose more max HP from it. So I don't think it's worth locking and spending 30 uh, and losing 2.6 HP. I have to remember, you know, it's bad to take damage on this character. Not not terrible. And in the early game, the, the bonus attack speed and stuff can actually be useful. So it's maybe sometimes right on Golem. Um, I haven't played this character, like infinitely or anything, but probably if you were to, to do a really deep dive on the mechanics of Golem, you would discover that in the early game it's right to deliberately take damage to boost your attack speed, because you, when you're below certain health thresholds you get more uh, wave clear. I'll take elemental damage here and more elemental damage, that's great, and then here I'm going to take 8% damage. We can't take weird ghosts on this character, unfortunately, unless I want to play the next wave perfectly, which is possible, but I think will cost us too much money, especially with a bad weapon set. So I'll take the torch, max that out, which is nice. So now we're up to 65 HP, which is great. And nine elemental damage, that's a lot of flat damage. So some things are going okay for us. Um, don't need any of this, do I reroll? I think, yeah, we'll be able to afford something good if I reroll. Lock the torch. I will lock the blindfold as well, because dodge is going to be really important to us. And lure, I think I will still lock. Obviously, we don't get the regen from this, but we should be able to kill two late loot aliens. So basically, we're spending 60 on two random crates, um, which isn't like the most efficient trade when you can't use the regen at all, but it's still pretty good. Those random crates can have all kinds of stuff in them. It could, as they say, even be a boat. Already have taken some damage, which I could have avoided if I'd been playing more carefully, but um, that's why we didn't take the weird ghost, so I didn't have to play carefully and can focus on, on wave clear here. The snake has helped a lot. Even though Torch applies damage pretty well, like it, it uh, Torch is typically going to hit multiple enemies already, um, it basically gives us extra range on applying our elemental damage here. We are leaving a lot of materials on the ground, so I should invest in baby geckos or pickup range if I see that kind of thing. Geckos, preferentially. Pickup range is usually good for consumables, which we don't care about. Do I just take 10 luck, or do I roll for something better? I, I think I'll just take the luck here. And then I almost just automatically bought the weird food, but obviously we don't want that. We can afford all of this, right? That's 156. Yeah, so we'll just buy these three. And then I will do one reroll, even though we've already bought um, all of our... We won't be able to afford anything, but we hadn't rerolled yet, so it's a very cheap reroll. We could lock something, save some money. That's one of the questions I get most frequently, is why do you reroll when you can't afford anything? And it's because both rerolls and the cost of items go up as you pass through the waves. So it's very useful to gain to spend money on rerolls when they're cheap, lock a cheap item, and then you're able to save money overall. All right, nice. We got both of our loot alien spawns early in the wave, which is really important, because that means that we are able to clear them. If, if one of them had spawned at the last five seconds of the wave, there'd be no chance for us to clear it. I actually should probably have paid attention to what what wave we were on, because when loot aliens can spawn in the wave um, is based on what wave you're on. They spawn starting at 20 seconds in and every 15 seconds thereafter is when you can get loot aliens. Um, might be a little different if you have lure, but that's, that's the usual pattern. And so in the waves that are only 30 seconds long, the, or starting at 10 seconds in and every 15 seconds thereafter, excuse me. So in the waves that are only 30 seconds long, you are most likely to get a loot alien at five seconds remaining, which is why you often see people scrambling to get them at the end of the, the waves. 
have to reduce my dodge, but it's still worth taking Toxic Sludge. And, oh, yeah, I'll just build dodge here. All right, great. 12 HP. I mean, that's incredible. 10 luck coming in clutch. And we are already at 89 HP. Flaming Brass Knuckles. I think this counts as a torch. It's basically a torch, right? It's a melee weapon that, uh, that applies fire. I think we're allowed to pick this one up, and that will help a lot with our damage. Um, here I'm going to grab... Now, it does scale with uh, with melee damage rather than elemental damage. I think I will take the duct tape now, and I will also lock the defective steroids. I want the attack speed as well, but HP, and now we have something that scales with melee damage, so that's not bad at all. I don't know... I wonder how, how well this Flaming Brass Knuckles is actually going to do for us. Oh, I probably shouldn't have killed the Slasher. Our damage is surprisingly pretty good, especially now that I've got these Knuckles. Um, so I can probably clear the slashers and don't have to break the eggs. Especially because we can hit them and then just run away and let them kind of tick out to the fire. The big advantage that the brass knuckles have over the torches is that the fire lasts longer and ticks for more. Different items provide different kinds of fire. So knowing which ones... And, and when you have multiple kinds of fire applied to an enemy, the game tries to apply the, the strongest one. Um, so when you have... Knowing which items will give you which things is, is really important. I'm going to lose to elemental damage here. It does suck to do that, but 10% uh, speed is too good to pass up. And then we're going to recycle this. 10 harvesting, is that worth it at this point? I guess so, because it's a level 3 upgrade. I will definitely take the bag here. We'll take defective steroids. We'll take torch. We'll roll. So let's check our damage. 2,600 versus like 400 on all the torches. Getting a little carried by the brass knuckles, but I think that's okay. And then uh, we're going into... We, we're still pre-wave 9, so I think I'm okay to take the black belt. Levels are pretty good for this character, and we don't really care that much about luck. So I will buy the black belt. Um... And, and we now can use the melee damage. I mean, we could use it before with the torches, but it matters a lot more for the Knuckles. One of the interesting things about Black Belt as an item is that it has uh, quite a bit of tension in it, right? It gives you more levels, but it reduces your luck, making each individual level you get worse. So it's just an interesting item in that there's uh, some anti-synergy built into the item itself. That doesn't make it a bad item, but is something that you have to pay attention to. And so characters that really care about luck probably won't want to buy this. Do I want this claw tree? We would lose 1.3 HP, but get a melee damage and 3% crit chance. Um, I don't know how much we're going to be using crit chance. I guess it's, yeah, because Flaming Brass Knuckles doesn't have any built-in crit or I guess it has 1% built-in crit. Torch has zero. So we're never going to crit reliably on this build. I think it's still worth it, though. Just a little bit of DPS increase, and I'll lock the helmet here. I need to increase my speed some more as well. This is uh, where the game is going to become difficult. I mean, really where the game is going to become difficult for a golem build is wave 14, where you typically can't avoid taking damage. Um, we actually have good knockback on these weapons, so the rib cages, which are often a source of, of damage that's very hard to avoid, shouldn't be too bad for us. Really trying to focus on picking up materials, because we've had to leave so many on the ground in previous waves. The... That's one of the, the hidden downsides of elemental builds, is that often enemies will die away from you. I'm going to chase this guy down for sure. And leave the materials on the ground in a place where you can't get them. Costs you a significant amount of money overall. Alright, we're almost at 300. Wave 8 is where you want to be making about 300, so that's not bad. I will take the Terrified Onion. Losing out on luck is unfortunate, but like I said, it doesn't matter as much for this character as for other characters because you don't use consumables at all. Here, I'll take the elemental damage, I think, over the HP. Just need some of that. And then I probably take 1.3 armor over 8 harvesting. Our harvesting is fine, like I'm happy to build harvesting, but we really need to start getting defensive stats now. Take the helmet. 
we already have good knockback on our weapon, so I don't need the boxing glove. Uh, and, and knockback for this character is good, of course, because as you push the enemies away, it helps a lot. I'll buy the lumberjack shirt, both because it's cheap and pulls a unique out of the pool, which will improve our shop, but also because elemental builds do benefit a lot from lumberjack shirt, since often the fire won't be enough to kill a tree. You need to go back and hit it again. Buy a gentle alien, roll, upgrade our torches, um, banner gives me range and attack speed. We have negative attack speed. I probably wouldn't buy this if, if our attack speed wasn't in in the negatives, but it's really important to boost my attack speed, so I'll pick that up. Do I want insanity? I mean, crit chance doesn't matter at all, really, our damage other than for the flaming knuckles, because our damage is going to be pretty low. So the knockback is important for this wave, actually. Otherwise, we'd be taking a lot of random chip damage from these guys, since they're faster than we are. But as is, we knock them back, and then they burn. Uh, this is the last wave where Torch will look like a good weapon, though. Wave, wave 9, it looks okay. Wave 10 and up, Torch is, you start to see Torch really struggling. Taking a lot of chip damage just by walking into enemies here. I'm trying to stay in the middle of the arena as much as possible to avoid leaving too much stuff um, on the ground at the outskirts. We're gonna... Oh, uh, no, I don't think I'll kill this thing in time. Come on. Oh, nice! Died right at the end. All right, well, I had to leave some materials on the ground for that, but we got the loot alien, and hey, it turned into two more loot aliens. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, do I want percent damage or armor? I think I want armor. And then here I'll take three attack speed. Or 15, level three attack speed. Crown, will this pay for itself ever? Is there any chance of that happening? At wave 10, it's basically going to give me one extra harvesting per level. I don't think the crown is going to pay for itself. Because um, next level it'll be worth three instead of two. And then the level after that it'll be worth three again. If I buy more harvesting, it, it will. I might speculate on this. It's expensive and bad if it doesn't come together, but if it if I find just one more good harvesting item, the crown will pay for itself. Uh, and I also just love economy items, so... You all probably knew what was going to happen there. I will take the peaceful bee. There's an, a harvesting item as well as some dodge for us. And we will take... Terrified Onion, yeah, at 9 speed, I really want to boost that a little more. I, I don't really care about luck at this point. We're just going to let that tank. Um, claw Tree, I probably I shouldn't have bought the earlier Claw Tree, because we don't use Crit Chance at all. That was definitely a mistake, so we'll pass on that this time. And then here, I can get the Dangerous Bunny. I could buy Piggy Bank and immediately make back 10 of it. Just, we would have 50-ish in the bank, and... We would make back 10. That's just not enough to be worth it. Here, I can pick up a cake. And campfire is elemental damage, but losing speed and getting pay... We pay a bunch for the regen as well. I think we'll just pass on that. Almost at 100 HP, though. Having the one weapon that does decent damage just as its attack has been helping a lot. And also, it's a weapon that you just don't get to see used very often. This is a build that can use it, so I wanted to take the Flaming Brass Knuckles. Alright, let's see if I can chase down this loot alien. Took took a couple hits to, to get him, but we put a bunch of damage on him. Maybe I'll take out to the fire. Let's see. I know there should be another one spawning soon. I'm okay taking a little bit of damage here. Just some chip damage. I'm, I'm trying to... There we go. I was trying to look for where the loot alien was to make sure that I got to start hitting it early enough. Since we know there's one spawning, we can kind of plan our route around making sure we hit it. Left 100 on the ground there. Do I want alloy? I think I don't, oddly enough. The three elemental damage and three melee damage is powerful, but we need to start building dodge. 
Um, is that right? It, it increases the damage of my fire a lot, but yeah, I think we, we have to recycle this. Definitely going to recycle wisdom here. You need the damage, you need your damage high in the early stages of the wave on an elemental build. And yeah, I'll take a fertilizer. We have crown as well. Here we get our three elemental damage, so it's fine. Wow, getting, I guess this one's guaranteed to be all level threes, but we got to take two level threes, even though I spent out my, um, my luck down to zero. Do I want 15 attack speed, nine speed, or to roll for something? I could roll for armor. A level three armor would be great. A level three dodge would be really good because I could start building that towards cap. I think I am going to roll. And yeah, I'm going to take dodge over everything else here. I wouldn't mind elemental damage or harvesting or whatever, but I want to start building my dodge to cap as soon as possible. Metal plate, definitely. Peaceful bee, yes. Torch, yes. Roll. Um, upgraded torch again, sure. We've we've got uh, six regen on this version of the golem. <laughs> um, rolling again. It's possible that I should actually have gone to a level four torch because the uh, the fire gets so much better as you upgrade it. You can see this is six ticks of thirty one, and this is four ticks of twenty seven. Um, and the level six one has or the level four one has six ticks, so it's even better. Um, and it doesn't really matter when you have the, el when you're focusing on these fire builds, you want to have a single leveled weapon rather than a bunch of lower level weapons. So that was probably an error. Let's roll again. And yeah, I will take toxic sludge. 2% um, dodge is a lot less than 6% dodge to lose. And I'll take spicy sauce as well. One more reroll to see if I can get anything good here. And here I am going to combine to a level 4 torch. This one ticks 8 times, which is a lot. And also actually does the same damage as my brass knuckles. So this is a, a really good uh, fire proc to have. We'll buy the torch here. Given that this torch actually has better fire than the knuckles, I could consider selling it for another torch when we find one. Just to max out my primitive weapon tag again. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. That that might actually be correct. Yeah, so this wave shouldn't be too difficult because we, we can push these guys back forever and they'll tick out to the damage as we push them back. The spicy sauce I don't think is going to be a major contributor to our damage because we have extremely negative luck, so we're not going to be generating a lot of consumables for the explosion. But, um, and I'm not going to build, like, explosive damage or explosive size as a result of them. But the explosion itself should hit pretty hard. Since our HP is going to be really high. I'm okay letting these materials pile up in the center here. I'll just run into the middle and pick them all up before the end of the wave. As long as I make sure I actually get them before the wave ends, then we're okay. And what you want to do is you want to kind of herd the enemies into into one place and then hit them, uh, rather than running into the middle of a group of them. Because if you're in the middle of a group, you push them all in, in directions out away from you, right? Like so. Whereas if you run in a circle around them and herd them into the middle, all the materials will be grouped for you to grab at the end of the wave. So on these builds that kill slowly, it's really important to herd the enemies rather than punt them away. I'm going to recycle the glasses. We don't care about range at all. Reroll this, and we'll take 6% dodge. Scared Sausage. So how this will work is it will just increase our burning damage by 1, um, which is fine. I mean, plus 1 burning damage is, is good. Uh... Basically, when you have Scared Sausage, it, it increases the damage of all of your weapons that have burning just by one. That's all that it does. Um, but that's still pretty useful, especially when combined with percentage damage. Take the Blindfold. We're now up to 33% dodge, so that's going pretty well. We'll take an Alien Worm, because we don't care about consumable healing. Obviously, we don't care about the regen, but this is just 4 HP. And uh, yeah, I'll take this as well. Get a free reroll. 
Bait is dangerous on this character because it's hard to avoid taking damage from the bait aliens. But I think our defenses are good enough that we can get away with it. Do I want charcoal here? We'd lose two harvesting for one elemental damage. It is so important to get elemental damage, so I'm going to do that. It's a very expensive elemental damage purchase, but I think it's okay. I'm not going to buy mutation, though. That's even more expensive and just not good. Uh, I, I'll buy fertilizer. It, I would buy it anyways, but especially with the crown, it's going to be useful. Crown has currently given us five extra stats, so severely not paid for itself currently. Um, we'll see if it does by the end of the, the game here. Upgrade my torch. Or do I want to sell the knuckles? 42 times 6, 42 times 8. So I could get... Basically, the question is, is it better to have two items that do decent fire, as well as this having just 42 attack damage, um, so it's just better damage, or having a little more HP? I think the knuckles are still better to, to hang on to, so I'll buy the torch here. Rerolls are getting expensive, so we're just going to jump into the next wave. All right, try to set all of the lampreys on fire. You want to run in between these groups of lampreys um, because they'll they'll charge past you, and you can see there was like a, a cone of space that I had around myself um, because they all charged past me and let the projectiles kind of just arc over over top of where my character went. I wish I had a little bit more attack speed, so it's possible I should have invested into that earlier because. I wasn't paying attention to there being a horde, and attack speed is the most important thing when there's a horde, because um, there's not really a good way for us to dodge all these enemies. I'd love to break these trees. Just there's so many enemies, we just have to kill them or punt them away. All right, five seconds. Can I make it in to grab materials? Not super safely, so we're just going to leave a lot on the ground. That's okay, though. We survived. That was probably the hardest thing we'll have to do, although some elites could be incredibly difficult. Um, I am going to grab attack speed now, actually, just fighting the last war, but I think it's still worth doing. And do I want the alien tongue? This would give me pickup range, and we have struggled picking up materials, but I think it's just not as good as Baby Gecko for us or anything like that. We'll buy another torch and roll. Pocket Factory. We do have a Lumberjack shirt, but no engineering. I just don't think it's super worth it. I'll take more armor, though. I'm basically looking for dodge and armor at this point. That's the, the only things that really matter. Buy metal plate, buy torch. Um, yeah, a little more move speed couldn't hurt either, so we'll buy that. And then, do I want any of these? I do want some percent damage. Our percent damage is quite low. I don't know if I want it badly enough to spend on either of those. I will take Snail. Snail will help a lot before we go into the next uh, Elite Wave. I was hoping to find something that gave dodge in that shop, but we've actually gotten pretty lucky on dodge items in the shop. Um, dodge is one of the stats that tends to come from leveling up rather than from shop, because there aren't a lot of efficient items, and just not that many items in general that, that give dodge. So you often end up getting most of your dodge just from level ups. And one thing that I like to do is when I'm rolling for... Um, when I get later in the waves, I like to hold out for level 3 dodges the level 3 or higher dodge level ups because those are relatively consistent to get and 9% dodge gets you a, a long way towards your dodge cap, right? You only need 7 of those to be dodge capped. Um, so when combined with a few of the dodge items that do exist, the dodge level ups are the best way. I'm going to run in, take a bunch of damage, but I really wanted to pick up as uh, at least some of those materials. Uh, triangle of Power, I don't think we can afford... It is really good damage, but um, and we do have to dodge a lot, but I think it's just too dangerous to take Triangle of Power. I'm going to reroll this. This is a bad chop for us. Also a bad chop. Let me reroll again. And, ooh, this is a tough one. 12% damage is really important. Percent damage is really good for us right now because we have very high flat damage and very low percent damage. Dodge is also really good, though. 
I would take the dodge over the HP. It's going to be more effective health. I think I'm going to take the damage, though. And then here I'm going to just take one armor. Let's upgrade our torches. Uh, I guess what I should do, actually, is get a second level 4 torch to make sure we're applying the level 4 torch damage. Get the snail. Get the recycling machine. I think that will still have time to pay for itself. Broken Mouth, Leather Vest, Cyclops Worm, all excellent finds here, and we can afford all of them, so very happy with that. That gets our percent damage to a much healthier value. Now our damage is significantly higher, as well as getting our dodge back up to up to 40%. Um, community support will cost me armor, and attack speed isn't that relevant for this character. Like, we want, like... 50-ish percent, but mostly we're just trying to, just for knockback, but mostly we're just trying to apply the fire, so I think I'm going to pass on community support. Normally an excellent item, but not for this character, I don't think. And Chameleon, we're never going to stand still, so it's even though I really do want dodge very badly, that's a very inefficient way to buy it. And I think similarly I'm going to pass on Lucky Charm. Alright, so this is a tough one because... The summons mean there's going to be a lot of clutter on the field. The, this, this elite is a tough one to get. Because the summons mean there's going to be a lot of clutter on the field. So I'm trying to break the eggs. Um, as well as clear the, the summons from the, the goobers as much as we can. I think we're going to have to play this wave super defensively though. Oop. Ah, <laughs> I walked right back into that attack and that one. So we're not going to make a lot of money. But basically the plan here is to um, stay on the opposite side of the field from the elite. And let the summons just cap themselves in number while we kind of dodge. And then I'll take some damage here to make my way to the other side of the arena. Uh, walked into a million attacks there, but we made it with only 14 HP left. Made almost no money. But that's... Uh, that's just what you have to do against that setup. Wave 14 is super hard for the golem. That elite summons a lot of units. So my idea was I'm going to just not kill anything that wave and let them despawn. And then as they despawn, it, we just have to dodge, just have to try to stay alive. I'll take the fuel tank. And incendiary turret is often okay on these elemental builds because you're buying snakes and scared sausages, both of which increase its damage and make it better. I'm not going to worry about it, though. Oh, I should have taken Pocket Factory, though, actually. I totally forgot I had the scared sausage, and that's a really good use for Pocket Factory is applying that. So that that was a, a big error. Definitely should have taken Pocket Factory. I'm going to pass on the acid here. We need dodge more than we need health. Grab the torch and one more reroll. I'm going to grab... Um, we have negative luck or cyberball. Could be good, but I think I'll take the fuel tank. We'll lock the torch as well. 10% crit chance, but we're never going to kill anything with the actual critical hits. So I'm not, not at all worried about getting... Um, getting the hunting trophy. So what I'm doing here is I'm, you know, I'm hitting the, the slugs and then standing near where I just killed them to make sure that I'm clearing the summons before they can stack up. That's what I'd have liked to do last wave as well, but because of the elite putting us under even more pressure, there was just no clean way to play the last wave, so we just had to play super defensively. And one of the skill sets in this game is recognizing when you just can't fight an elite or can't play a wave aggressively. Um, and just have to play really defensively. You can see now we are starting to really struggle. Um, I think I've got enough HP left to take a few hits and get all these materials. I wanted to get that tree, but we've managed to pick up basically all the materials before the end. Uh, here I'll take... I think our damage is actually fine. I'm just going to take health. I'm basically just going to focus entirely on defensive stats now. Upgrade a torch. Um, Tardigrade... I guess Tardigrade is... So normally Tardigrade is inefficient because it is worth... Um, 
the damage that you take at the beginning is worth less than damage that you take at the end. Like, the first hit you take in a wave, you'll usually have healed up by the time you take another hit. That's not true for Golem. All damage that you take is equally valuable. That said, individual hits aren't what's getting us, because we have 19 armor and 34 dodge. Um, so Tardigrade is basically, like, plus 10 HP for us. Is that worth picking up? I think plus 10 HP for 126 is something that I would take, so I'm going to buy that. But just worth thinking about sort of how this item interacts with the character you're actually playing. Banner, I don't think we need. I'm going to roll again. Still really looking for something that... I'll take the pocket factory now. Um, I'm, I was really looking for dodge and armor, though. <laughs> Oh, let's make sure we kill that thing, or at least tag it with some fire. Really need to kill these buffers before too many enemies get buffed. This wave, it's not as bad, but next wave when they're buffing rib cages is the really dangerous combo for the, the buffing aliens. Alright, so we, we're setting that guy on fire. <laughs> the uh, pocket factory has not come up since we've seen zero trees. <laughs> I feel like I've gotten actually very few tree spawns this, this game. They aren't affected by luck, so there shouldn't be anything, even though we have low luck, there shouldn't be anything stopping them from spawning. I guess we've just gotten unfortunate there. Recycle that, and I'm going to re-roll this. I could take one elemental damage, but again, I am looking for dodge. Yeah, I'll take 3% dodge. It's just so good. The The closer you get to 60, the better each point of dodge becomes, um, especially for this character, so we're definitely just going to focus on that. I can take the flamethrower now. Obviously, we're an elemental build, but um, do I feel like that's in the spirit of the build. 48 times 5 actually isn't even better fire than we're applying right now. So I'm going to pass on the flamethrower. I think it would be correct to take the level 2 flamethrower. It would end up outpacing the even the level 4 torches very quickly. But just for the sake of, of the, the challenge here, we're going to stick with torches and another melee fire weapon. Um, nothing here we want. Let's roll... Repost doesn't do anything because we've reduced our melee damage a lot back down to quite low. Um, I'll take Toxic Sludge. No, I think I'm actually going to pass on Toxic Sludge. We want elemental damage, of course, but I just don't want to reduce my dodge at this point. Roll again. We're really valuing dodge very, very highly here, as you can tell. Do I want this wheelbarrow? How's our crown doing? 33 stats. So uh, each of those is going to apply for a few waves. So I'm guessing I've made about 100 off the crown. Um, plus some XP, which also multiplies with our black belt. So the crown, I think, did end up paying for itself because I found a bunch of harvesting. I'm not going to buy a wheelbarrow, though. Um, heavy bullets doesn't do anything we want. Combine the turret because we have the uh, the scared sausage combo. I think I will buy the turret, and then I'm just gonna save this money. These rerolls are getting expensive, and we just haven't found anything good. If I get another scared sausage, then this turret and the the pocket factory will start actually contributing. Um. Second Scared Sausage is where the, the elemental engineering combo builds tend to come online. Because at 25% chance to set things on fire, your turret will just not set that many things on fire, usually. But at 50% chance, it's pretty likely to hit to set a lot of stuff on fire over the, the course of the wave. Found two loot aliens there, and I didn't have a lure, so that that's pretty lucky. And even with the buffed rib cages, we're able to punt them away pretty reliably here. So things are going pretty well. This, um, the one snake that we got, I can't emphasize how much. 
or I can't cannot overemphasize how much that's helping. It's really letting us spread fire much further. It increases effectively increases the range of our attacks by like a hundred, which is very very powerful. Uh, we'll never gain any benefit from beam teacher that's better than a hundred materials, so I'll, I'll do this. And similarly, wheelbarrow will not have time to pay for itself. We'll get harvesting on wave eighteen and nineteen. Yeah, I don't think that's worth it. Rolling here, I'm looking for dodge. Is it better to take 3% dodge over 12% damage? Probably I can't afford to do that. That that it dodge is so good for us at this point that that might have been the right pick though. Um yeah, a little more move speed won't hurt. Spicy sauce, yes. Focus. 30% damage. We don't really care about losing attack speed at all. Um, we have enough that we're hitting stuff, and so focus is just a huge amount of bonus damage to our fire. We'll take the peaceful bee as well. And bandana, kind of interesting alongside the engineering sub-theme, but I just don't think that's an important enough part of this build to justify buying a bandana. I will buy a turret, though. And now I think I will buy the incendiary turret. Do I want just 20 melee damage from the mammoth? Just juice our flaming brass knuckles. Uh, not really. Incendiary turret. Is that going to be worth it? It can help break trees and stuff. I don't think so. I think I'm going to just spend on a reroll here and see if I can get something that actually helps us. Uh, which we didn't really. I'm not going to buy book even though we have a couple turrets. Because those are just to apply the fire. Alright, so how's our damage against the elite looking? Just not good enough. So again, we're going to play on the other side of the arena from the elite. This is the wave I think we could most easily lose at this point. Obviously, it's an elite wave, which makes it much harder. Um, our dodge is not capped yet, and these, these buffed chargers, it's really hard to avoid the damage from them because they're so fast. Trying to clear the buffers out, which means I need to, like, sort of hunt around for them as they spawn. But one downside of the pocket factory engineering thing is that it's hard not to break all of these summoners. A lot of close calls this run. Oop, it stood right on that slash. Just gonna run around the corner here, and then we can dip into the middle and get our materials. This has been a run where I think we've we've gotten very close to losing it a lot of times, so that's kind of interesting. We'll see if we can make it through the, the boss wave. That's actually going to be a real challenge. Um, I'll take the lure. Two boxes is more chances to find, if we can get the two boxes, more chances to find dodge before the end of the game. And then here, I'm going to hard roll for any dodge, I think. All right, well, I spent like 100 on 3% dodge, but I think that was still correct. Five armor, yes please, from the exoskeleton, definitely. Um, is it worth upgrading my flaming brass knuckles to level four? Probably, that's gonna be a lot of extra damage. Roll, and can upgrade my torches. We're not going to have much money going into the next wave, so that's 83. Yeah, so the Brass Knuckles are better damage. The fire damage is better than the level 4 torch damage. Trying to kill the fast enemies, because normally the, the weak, fast enemies you can ignore on most characters. It's because your, your weapons... They don't do that much damage, so you'll just heal it up back up. And your weapons will clear them in, in one shot. But on this character, our weapons don't kill anything in one shot, because it needs the fire ticks to go off before things actually start dying. And, alright, let's try to hit that loot alien. Um, and then where's the other one? There should be another one spawning eventually. I hope it didn't despawn. We're not killing things very fast, so enemies could easily be despawning here. All right, here it is. Let's see if we can get it. I genuinely can't tell if I'm killing it. Uh, okay, well, we got one, but the, there's another one over here, which I got right at the end. Nice, okay. And we got 688 materials. <laughs> uh, this is a little insulting. Baby Gecko after it stops being useful at all. Capping our HP for 8 elemental damage. I think that's worth it. 
we're not going to need more than 140 HP. I will recycle the alloy, though. And I'll just take 3% dodge here again. Just really trying to get this to cap, if possible. Just upgrade our torches and roll. Eye surgery is huge for fire builds, but we're never killing the elites, so I think I'm going to roll past it. This is very good, obviously, but we're really just looking for defensive stats at this point. Uh, Wolf Helmet, similarly, is a ton of bonus damage. Um, we could upgrade to another torch, but I'm just going to roll for dodge or armor. Don't need HP because we have that, or a snake. Um, is this duct tape worth buying for one armor? Probably. I could rebuy three HP with the broken mouth. I think that's probably worth it as well. Then if I lose some HP with the rest of this stuff. Okay, and we hit a gambling token. That's all we really needed was just to get dodge capped. I'm very happy we got to 60% dodge before the end of the shop. Um, so definitely worth it not to buy those aggressive items like the wolf helmet or the extra torches or whatever. And then, yeah, nothing else we want to buy. So we have 29 armor, 60% dodge, and 146 HP. Well, let's see if we can survive this boss wave. I am going to just like hit the bosses a couple times and kind of see what our damage against them looks like, but it's just not going to do it. Instantly take a hit there during the early stages of the, the wave. Um, this is one we can still very easily lose. Golem can always, especially... Like, a, on a normal Golem build, right, you would be using spiky shields or something. And your damage at this point would be absurd, just from the, the bonus stat scaling. So you'd just kill the elites before you had to dodge all their stuff. Um, on this version of the build, where we can't actually kill bosses, we are stuck just having to dodge uh, for the entire 90 seconds. And the amount of damage we can take there is, is pretty high. Trying to fit in the gap there, but then I took a hit from the charger. Oops. Generally, if you're going to take damage from something, take damage from a projectile or a, an attack on the ground, not a, a melee attack the actual enemy attacks do more damage. Gotta get away from these buffed chargers. They're just too dangerous. We have the bonus move speed for being low health, so that makes it a little easier to dodge. Very glad I got the, the lucky percentage dodge there. Three, two, one, and... Whew! One more hit would have done it, but we made it! <laughs> that was a tough one. Uh, very narrow escapes throughout and very happy that I made that one work um yeah that that I I'm actually pretty pleased with that run I think that will be that would be somewhat hard to duplicate uh reliably but you know I know people like to play along so I wish you all luck with this one uh let's take a look at some of the choices we made as well just for fun so the tardigrade paid off we'd have died I think in the last three waves without the tardigrade because I ended it like 10 health um, and it was definitely blocking 10 damage. Uh, the crown, we spent 120 on that. It made a 77 stat. So the crown did pay for itself. We have 195 harvesting. So crown worked out. Um, although I did prioritize harvesting a little higher because of it. The, let's see, what else? Recycling machine paid for itself as it usually does. Spicy sauces did not do very much damage, which we expected because we had negative 16 luck. Um, yeah, overall, and, and bag paid for itself, obviously, because it always does, but wasn't a huge contributor. I think a big thing was finding three peaceful bees that helped a ton, and, um, just generally a lot of good economy items in this build. All right, my friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this Brotato Danger 5 random random run, and of course, as always, if you have, do please feel free to leave a comment, um, like the video, both of those things help a ton with the algorithm. And one of the things that makes Brotato struggle a little on this channel sometimes is that when regular viewers don't watch a video, um, YouTube is less likely to recommend it. So if people are more interested in, in Baldur's Gate, they then 
get recommended my other videos, don't click on them, and YouTube's algorithm thinks that's a bad video that nobody wants to watch, even though it's just a video that's for a different subset of the audience. Uh, it's just the, the struggle with, uh, you know, a, a variety gaming channel. So any algorithmic juice that you can give the Brotato videos will help them maybe crack into a, a new audience outside of the people who normally watch this channel. And once other people start clicking on them, then they, they pick up again in terms of views. So that it really does help a lot if you like the video and comment and all that. Um, all right. Anyways, all that out of the way. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.